salutations and welcome to the Calkins Nature Center. We're here today to participate in a really great event. We are going to be catching, tagging, and releasing monarch butterflies for their migration to Mexico. We're going to speak with a naturalist, learn all about the monarch butterflies, and then we'll be releasing some. So come along. This is going to be a really great time. All right, you got a couple of them. We can tag a few while we're inside. So Davis and I were going to go into the actual nature center and identify and tag these monarchs, and we're going to get them on their way to their migration. And Davis is going to tell us a little bit about their generations and how they work and the fact that these are coming up on being an endangered species, so we have to protect them. It's going to tell us a little bit how tagging them helps that. Okay, so we're here at the Calkins Nature Center. We're here with Davis, and Davis is a naturalist. Yep. He's going to tell us everything we need to learn about the migration of the monarch butterfly and why this is so important. Um, so I've got some monarch butterfly stuff here. We're actually kind of in the peak of our migration season for our monarch butterflies here in north central Iowa. Um, and we have gone out about the last week and a half. Have, we've really gotten big flushes of monarchs that we've gone out in our prairie here and, and we've actually captured about 180 of them butterfly house right now. So what our monarchs are doing, they're actually on their way to central Mexico for their uh, winter migration. Um, they spend their, their entire winter season in the Oyamel fir forests of central Mexico. So in a given year, uh, we have about four or five generations of those monarch butterflies that are here in Iowa. Um, only the fourth or fifth, so whatever the last generation is in a year, is the one that is going to migrate down to Mexico. So I always try to say it to kids this way. Imagine in one year, you, your mom, your grandma, and your great grandma are all born. You are the only one that makes it that makes it down to Mexico. So you right. can be the only one of the generations. And that's These, a super generation. That's a super generation. The other ones die within about a month time frame. So by the time they're egg to caterpillar, uh, into chrysalis, into full butterfly, that whole life cycle is just about a month. Wow. So, really short life cycle but that last one is that super generation where they they live down there for you know the entire winter then they make part of their migration back then by the time they're about halfway to iowa they have another generation that that replaces so them. this super generation their lifespan is what about eight months is yeah it? that ballpark seven isn't eight that months. amazing eight months yeah compared to just one month on the other ones and the super generation they're bigger they can be yep um then the funny thing about the science is Nobody's really figured out how the last generation is the one that knows to migrate because they're really the only ones that make that long trekking migration. Right. So at some point it passes from generation to generation, but only the last one needs to know Isn't how to that do that. Crazy. It's wild. It's and super the wild. super generation, they um, they don't mate until, until they, they make start coming return. back up. Yep, that's so, exactly right. But the other ones, they mate right away. They get their yep. next generation going. Yeah, yeah so, correct. Yep, so we see those cycles of butterflies throughout the year here. You know, we'll have this snap where there's lots of monarchs, then all of a sudden we have none. Well, that's because there's nothing but eggs, and we have caterpillars, and we get this big bust of them again. So we have these really quick cycles within our summer months here. Awesome. Yeah. It's so neat, and it's so interesting to learn. Davis was kind enough. We went outside earlier to the butterfly house, and I'll get some shots of that later, and we'll put that into the video here but he brought in two butterflies that are gonna be making their migration down to Mexico. Yep. So he's already identified that we have two males in the net and he has- the identification a, chart that we can use. So we'll get some closer pictures yeah, of this here in a little bit. We'll get some close-ups, but it's really neat because it, it, it shows you how to identify a male and a female. Yep. And it is the spot. Yep. They so have a spot on their wings. And I can see right. it here, I, I, can, I can identify it. And then also, um, we're going to be tagging these two to send them on their trip to their migration and he has everything here for the tagging and we can explain mm -hmm. the tagging. There's a really neat part on the feather. I've had a lot of people say, doesn't it hurt them? Doesn't it throw them off? Um, explain how this tag works. So essentially what it is, it's just this little teeny tiny sticker tag and it's extra tacky. So I always compare it to like if you go to the doctor, um, when you're all done, you know, they give you the, the nice sticker to put on your shirt. It's kind of like that for a butterfly, you know, you, you kind of, when it's on our shirt, you notice it's there, but it really doesn't affect you at all in, in how you move or, or function. And it's the same for them. You put that little sticker on the hind wing, 
So it'll go on their back set of wings on the outside. And once it's on there, they, they're kind of quirky at first. You'll notice they fly a little bit funny, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, okay, this is no right. big deal. And then they and take it doesn't right hurt them. It doesn't take doesn't off hurt the, them, the little powder that's on the other side of their wings. Yep. I'm sure that has a technical term. Yeah, the so it, so it's their scales. The so, scales. The, so they have scales on, on each of those wings. And what will happen is if, if somebody uh, has a lot of oil on their hands or they're too aggressive with uh, grabbing the butterfly, it'll wipe the scales off, which does affect their flight. So when we handle these, it's as gentle as possible. We generally just use two fingers, just pinch the wings together, and then we're very gently going to press that sticker okay. onto that hind wing. All right, well, let's tag one. Let's tag one and see what we get. So hopefully I don't let them go. We will have to do that. If you want to peel that first sticker off there for me. And I've done this once before, and I find it so amazing. Last time I had beautiful nails, though. <laughs> Still, I've got garden nails. So I've got my butterfly here. You'll see I just got the wings pinched between my two fingers. And on the back here, we can get an up close of it too, but there's a, a portion of the wing that we call the distal cell. It's kind of a U-shaped or um, mitten shape. Yeah, it looks like a mitten to me. Yeah, on the, on the hind wing. And that sticker is going to go right on that little distal cell. So I'm very carefully going to handle this butterfly. And I'll let you put that tag right on that distal Last cell. Last time I just balanced on your finger like this. Perfect. Sticking in more than it I got too high, huh? No, that's fine. Is that perfect? Yeah, that'll work. Okay. And we're just gonna press that down. So this one's got tag number AETW801. That's also got uh, mwtag.org on there, so we know that it came from Monarch Watch. So what I'm gonna do with this butterfly now is I'm actually gonna set him back inside the net, and I'm just gonna kind of close it up so he can't get out. And then we can do another one if you and want And then to. we'll do that one more up close. Sure, we can and do that. And then we can get, now, um, getting back to their migration, mm -hmm. I see you've got a certificate here that some from the Culkins Nature Center have actually made it to the forests in Mexico. Yep. And, but has, now, have they updated you lately from the last couple of years? Did any of those make it? So we have not received any back. However, that is totally dependent on the number of butterflies they're collecting, how many people they have that are out collecting. Because as you know, when they, you know, all of our butterflies in North America, it's particularly east of the Rocky Mountain Range, are going to end up in the same forest. So every monarch butterfly wow. ends up here. So to count through millions and millions and millions of butterflies every year, that takes a lot of bodies. So every butterfly makes it here and then down? Uh, not to Iowa, oh. down, but they make that Somewhere. channelization down to okay. central Mexico. Say, oh. Yeah, so they don't all pass through us. Nope. nope. And for those of you who are watching, it's not just like 10,000 butterflies or 100,000 butterflies, how many butterflies every year make it down to Mexico? Uh, like hundreds of millions sometimes. Hundreds of millions, and I've heard reports up to 2 billion butterflies, and the forests are just alive. Have you ever had the chance to go there? I've Is never gone dream? there, but it, it would be very cool. I've seen the videos and the pictures of you know butterflies hanging on these trees. Literally, the branches snap off because right. they're so heavy with butterflies. I think that would be amazing, and it sounds like it's windy, but it's not. It's just the, the flapping of their wings, of the wings. Yep. that actually moves the wind. Exactly so right. we're going to tag another butterfly. Mm -hmm. I know what the point I was going to make. So the ones that leave here from the Culkins Nature Center, how far do they fly to actually make it to the forest where they the forest to the forest where they end up? You put me on the spot, but I've luckily I've got it on my sheet here. So. From our, so we have, have an individual we tagged in 2002. It was collected in 2004, which means it took two years to pick through all those butterflies. Wow. Um, and it traveled 1,631 miles. So these two guys have a 1,600 mile, 1600 mile journey. A 1,600 mile journey. And they fly at heights of up to 10,000 feet. Very high. So they get up in the thermals like, like raptors, you know, hawks and things do when they're on long migrations. They just get up there and float. They coast. It so it's coast. not as arduous as you would think it is, Correct. or as, as, as exhausting. The, the hard part is you gotta get up, get up there. and then you gotta come down to eat if it's not you know the best migration day. So they, they do find a way to do it. Now what should somebody do if they're out on a walk or they unfortunately come across one of these ones that have been tagged and it has passed away? Mm -hmm. um, what should they do if they find one with a sticker on it? So I, I would say the best thing to do would be to look at that sticker tag, find the website, 
look up some contact information and just let them know, hey, I found this particular butterfly. It's dead at this location. So okay. it kind of gives them it's an important. idea. It's important. Yeah. Yep. Um, because these guys are going, getting closer and closer and closer to being considered um, on an endangered list. Yep, endangered why species list. Are the, why are the monarchs so important to our ecosystem? So their main role is as a pollinator species. And I don't think people realize how many things they actually pollinate, but the majority of our prairie plants, they are a main pollinator species for those. Um, I've seen them move from apple tree to apple tree, so I mean, they, they're moving around uh, trees that pr provide food for people. So they're incredibly important, not only to their native ecosystems, but but to us in particular. And, uh, you know, they, they've had a lot of issues as far as uh, population decline goes because of uh, loss of habitat, particularly, you know, their milkweed plants, they get mowed off in ditches here in the state of Iowa, which is why so many people say, you know, keep your milkweed plants, keep leave the milkweed. leave your milkweeds. And we have lots of varieties of them, you know, we've got butterfly milkweed, swamp milkweed, um, common milkweeds, and these butterflies use all of them. So any milkweed plant, I hate that they put weed in the name because that's why people right. think it's weedy, it's not. Um, they have to have them to be able to survive. So keep those milkweed plants, you know, when people get rid of them, that's a big reason for for population loss. Um, they've also had issues with logging. So believe it or not, these butterflies actually do roost in the evenings. They go up into a lot of trees and that's where they're gonna spend their evenings. So when they're familiar with a particular region, if a large expanse of forest is cut down, all of a sudden they don't have a place to roost, which can lead to um, death as well. And this happens even in their wintering grounds. So those fir trees that they go down and utilize so frequently when they're logged, these butterflies have no place to go. So they've seen a massive reduction in the in the forest size in central Mexico. And uh, yeah, there's just lots of things that are people, people may think it's just a butterfly and we have bees to pollinate. Yep. But they have I, their own particular role. Right. They have their own role and you, it would just domino from there. If you lose an important species like that, yep. it would just domino. That's exactly so it's right. important. So don't take down your milkweed, leave, leave them there. in your ditches or in, in your fields, on your farms. And if you want a really pretty one, butterfly milkweed or butterfly weed has this beautiful flame orange flower. I mean, they, they fit great in your landscaping, they look great in a rain garden. So any of those, I, I, I would... the ones with the purple? Common milkweeds. Just so common big, milkweed. Big purple fluorescences. Common. Yeah. Would you expect anything less from me? <laughs> Just common. Just common milkweed. Oh, they're great though. They Actually, I would say they... They probably provide more food for our monarch caterpillars than most other milkweed plants. There's a lot of food on those big, big milkweeds like that. So. I love it. I yeah. love it. All right, let's bring the camera closer. We're awesome. going to go ahead and tag the second one, and then uh, we'll go outside and release them. So we've got our male monarch butterfly here and our female. Uh, kind of the key distinguishing features, there's really only two that we go off of here. If you look at the, the width of the veins within the wings, even in the hind wings and the fore wings, they're very thin in a boy, opposite in a girl. Very, you can see that. very thick, bold veins. So I almost compare it to, it looks like somebody took a fine point Sharpie on the boy and a very bold Sharpie on the girl. So the veins are always super thick on the girl. But the biggest indicator, and this is going to be the case with all of our monarchs, is on these two hind wings on the top side here. You'll notice those two little polka dots, those two little eye spot um, looking markings on the male there. The female yep. does not have those. She does not have those. There's no markings back here. Two dots right there. And then just to see on this tagged butterfly here, you can see the little mitten where the sticker has gone. Yep. So this little mitten shape or this U shape here is that discal cell. And that is our sticker tag that's pressed down gently on that hind wing. So the separation of the two wings, this is the, the fore wing on the top. Then there's this little line that goes all the way across, and this is the hind wing. So we always put the tag on the hind wing because the, the fore wings here are going to be the most important for flight. And if we shove that sticker up here, it's going to affect their flight significantly more. And they found that through a lot of research. So that's why we always put it in the same place on that hind wing. How long has this tagging system been going on with the monarchs? Oh, Do you many, know? Yeah, many, many years. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Because it, it obviously had to take some research to learn exactly where to put the sticker. Correct. And, and just get all of those things worked out so you have a successful program. Yep. So are we talking years, decades? Obviously decades because your one was in 2002. Yes, correct. It's been decades. So they've actually determined this is one of the most successful citizen science projects that that's ever been conceived, if not the best. Wow. So there are people from all over the United States and North America that 
that come out this time of year just to do this stuff. So wow. they've gotten tons and tons and tons of data over the years. Okay, so I'm gonna find our one that is not tagged here, which is this back one here. And again, very gently, I'm gonna do this. Try not to hurt our other guy that's in there. So when we wanna identify the gender, we just very gently place our finger between the two wings and I can even use my pen to kind of open this up. And I see there are a couple spots. Might be hard to see on camera, but that does tell me this is a boy. So the two spots are right here on these hind wings. Okay. And I'm gently gonna close these wings up again. He's grabbing me. And then here is that, I'll use my pen. Here is that discal cell or that mitten that we are gonna place that tag on. Kind of right in the mitten there is where we're gonna go, right in what would be like the thumb piece. So I'm gonna take my tag, which is AETW802, and I'm very gently gonna press that here. And I shouldn't put it on upside down, but it doesn't matter as long as it's there. And I'm just gonna very gently pinch right there. And that tag is on and that butterfly is ready to go. So I can take this awesome. outside and release it. He's beautiful. Pretty awesome. And then when we're done with this, mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit too about what they what they use their feet for. Okay. They taste with their feet. Yeah, they can taste and feel with them. And also with their proboscis. Proboscis is yep. their tongue. Yep. They no longer have mandibles to eat. They Correct. use their proboscis. And um, is that do they pollinate with the proboscis? So Am what I saying that right? Um, so the, the technical term is proboscis. Proboscis. Yep. So what they do is they take their their proboscis and they're and they're reaching into a flower for nectar with that um, proboscis and it actually like unrolls mm -hmm. so it's rolled up on their face and what happens is when they go into that nectar that plant produces um, pollen and in turn when they go into the nectar it kind of gets all over their face gets on their body might get on their legs and then when they go visit another flower it helps the next flower to reproduce. Okay. So that is so unlike the honeybee where they collect the pollen on their legs, correct. they're this just depositing it. Yep. Awesome. Yep. And then the milkweed, from what I've researched, mm -hmm. the milkweed it has toxins or poisons in it, correct, it does. that protects the butterflies exactly right. from becoming prey. Yes. So it is. It is purely a defense against predation because they're, I mean, they're obviously an easy animal to catch. They're very slow flying. Um, lots of birds and things could eat them. So what they do is throughout their life cycle, when they are on a milkweed plant as an egg and they hatch into a caterpillar, they consume that milkweed plant and they, they retain that kind of latexy type substance that's within the leaves. Uh, and it works as a chemical defense for them to nice. pre prevent against predation. But the other great thing that they have done to kind of tell predators, hey, don't mess with me, is they've developed this bright coloration that says, if you eat me, you're going to have some problems, you know, whether it's an upset stomach or, um, you know, something small tries to eat them, it, you know, has the potential to kill them if they get enough ingested. So they're the ghost pepper yeah, of the right. butterfly they world. They tell you, don't mess with me, I'm bright orange. <laughs> that is a, that's a, a pure defense against predators telling them, hey, don't mess with me. So these guys are going to get started on their migration today, yep. and we wish them all the best, and let's go outside and release awesome. them.